Okay, today I'm covering a little information on the Eaton Fuller Heavy Duty Transmissions. Now, you won't run into this uh, in automotive realm, but you will run into it in the medium and heavy duty realm. So you can see how quite tall that shifter is there. Um, this is a 7 speed. It is a, uh, I have it written down, I think. Well, I had it written down. I was paint I guess I painted over it. Um, usually you have an ID tag right down there um, on the bottom side here. A little hard to see. But uh, this one does not. I got, a, got it for a song and a dance because of that. Uh, it is a 7-speed Eaton Fuller. Um, this is not the Road Ranger series. However, it has many of the same features as one. Uh, this is good to uh, 1,100 foot pounds of torque if I recall um, so ungodly amounts of torque this is actually going in a pickup truck and we'll be uh, covering that probably eh, in a few months once I get around to that so a couple things that I've had trouble finding myself on here is um, there are a few different options as far as how these transmissions are set up first thing is the bell housing now you can see here, this is uh, pretty big, it's 21 inches across. Uh, there are three main sizes used, SAE1, SAE2, and SAE3. SAE3 is typically very small uh, setups or a uh, power unit, gen set, you know, uh, stuff like that. Tractors are SAE3 commonly. Um, whereas the SAE2 is very common in your medium duty up into your heavy duties. SAE2 is very common actually and uh, the most common is the SAE1. This is SAE1. Uh, you can tell the difference by measuring across the diameter of the bell housing. Now you can see this is, uh, well, round. Most bell housings aren't round. Um, you actually have a clutch housing on the engine and a bell housing on the transmission. So that's where these mount, mate together. SAE uh, is just a generic standard used for these. And it's quite common to see a whole bunch of different variants. This particular transmission has a 2 inch 10 spline input shaft. Uh, I could put a little more oil on that to protect it from further rusting. Um, and it does use a clutch brake. A clutch brake here, this little disc, is activated by the clutch fork which pivots right in this area. Now the clutch brake is used when you're at a dead stop to get the transmission to a dead stop. So uh, you know uh, about double clutching if you don't you can always read up on it. Any Eaton Fuller you double clutch on uh, that's per Eaton Fuller so you know you can float gears you can single clutch you know um, but pretty much any Eaton Fuller you're gonna be double clutching that trans brake, uh, clutch brake actually, sorry, clutch brake, is going to stop the rotation of the input shaft when you go ahead and try to put it into the low gear. Next thing we're going to cover is this is a twin countershaft design. Countershaft is the gear that carries your power from the input shaft the whole way back to the output shaft right here. Um, so you can see the four bolts on there and on there. Those covers are covers for each counter shaft. So you have a set of gears on either side of the input and output shaft. That pretty much makes this transmission twice as strong. Layman's terms, I'm sure it's not exactly twice as strong. It might be more than twice as strong. But compared to the a similar design in a single counter shaft versus a twin counter shaft, you're going to get extra strength out of that. Um, now, this is non air operated. The truck it's going in will have air, but this is a non air operated unit. So, uh, when you go into the bigger transmissions, uh, you can have your, uh, your 10 speeds, you can have them. Uh, your 18 speeds have them and everything in between. Everything bigger than a 7 speed usually. A 9 speed is another one that could have it too. You have your main gearbox and then after that there is an auxiliary gearbox. It's back about here. 
So what you do is you go through your first set of gears, go back to first, shift into your second set or your uh, auxiliary setup and shift through your gears again. Your auxiliary, uh, you can have a underdrive, direct and overdrive, or just an under over, or a you know direct over, direct under, depending on the situation. So quick identification features you're looking for is big old bell housing, probably SAE1. Next thing you're looking at is the rear end. The rear case has an extension onto it that goes past the main case. Um, about a foot, eight inches. You're looking at something that's going to be air operated. It's going to have a high low feature, which means it's going to be at least at least a nine speed, eight or nine speed. Uh, there's eight speeds that have a high low, um, and there's I think there's a few eight directs they have. This one, like I said, is a seven because of the reverse. You have eight gear locations in underneath the shifter there. Um, a couple other things you're looking for to identify your Eaton Fuller transmission uh, along with the input shaft like I said up front you have a 2 inch 10 spline, an inch and 7 eighths 10 spline is the output shaft. Um, output shaft you have a whole bunch of different options with and without oil slingers um, you know you have uh, this one's a should be a 2 inch 10 spline on the output shaft also I will be confirming that once I pull that big old 5 inch nut that's torqued to 500 foot pounds off of there and uh, try to mate some kind of transfer case to it. So that'll be a future project, may cover it, may just give a rundown. Uh, if there's any interest in actual coverage, uh, more than just a rundown, let me know and we can uh, go from there to get some more information for you. So basic coverage of the Eaton Fuller transmissions, I have figured out a good bit of this in my own research. And uh, if there's anything I missed or anything that you think needs covered a little better, feel free to let me know and we can get another video. Thanks again for watching.